Hello, Efren. Hey, what's up, man? <laughs> it's so great to finally meet you. I really had a blast watching Seven Cemeteries. It's it's such a fun, yeah. campy tone with some awesome gore, epic battles and showdowns and stare-offs. I just, I just absolutely loved it. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. That means a lot. Good. <laughs> I did a good job <laughs> <laughs> and a perfect time to watch it i mean I, I think it's honestly the first like genre film for october like i've watched that like put me into the the halloween spirit you know with what it what it, what it tackles and i wanted to know what stood out to you most when you first read the script for seven cemeteries like which which page was it where you're like oh i got this this is gonna be a lot of fun well yeah uh, first of all you know i gotta say that i mean i i love i studied drama so, so when comedy came at me, I thought, okay, fine. That was Napoleon Dynamite. And so I was jumping back and forth doing comedy and drama. And I thought like, well, you know, let me jump into action. So I did crank and that just changed everything. And I thought at some point I know I want to do horror, but, but I want to do something that I, I don't want to say appeals to me, but something that's just different. And so, and so like, like, uh, two years ago, I was approached by uh, the, uh, Mike Mendez to do Satanic Hispanic. And I thought, yeah, you know, I want to do an anthology of, of, uh, of Latin stories of horror and, and, uh, and of that sort. And so then came this picture, which was Seven Cemeteries. And because it's an ode to Magnificent Seven or, or Seven Samurai, right? I love films that are based on characters or rather character driven stories. And so, um, because they're memorable and because these characters are, are fighting something that has such a deep meaning to them. So when I read Seven Cemeteries, I found that, that Miguel was a character who, in his regret of dying, was hoping to accomplish something that's unattainable, you know, in his lifetime, that, that, that we start in the present, you know, form where he's dead. And without giving much of the story, uh, uh, you could see not only his ambition for what could have been, but then you see his relationship, his relationship between you know with him and and Danny Trejo's character Bravo, and and it becomes much more like Man of La Mancha, right, where they in, are in support of each other and and they they kind of accomplish something good at the very end of the story, which is great. Yeah, I, I got to mention Satanic Hispanics. Um, it, it is such a great watch. I, this will make for a great double feature, to be honest. Once you're done with that, you know, if you haven't seen that one, watch this and that'd be fun. I mean, it's October. Watch as much as you can. And Seven <laughs> Cemeteries is up there. It's, it's going to bring a lot of fun to, to this, you know, season. And I really loved your character, but also loved your your look and the makeup. I mean, the makeup is really what transforms a character. So I want to know the makeup process for this film. And you have the, do you have contacts in? Because, and I, if, because I want to know how hard it was to see out of that because <laughs> it was trippy, a trippy look for sure. And I loved it. I, I'm probably, I don't know. I mean, cause I haven't seen the final product and I, I and I keep wondering if I'm the, like the worst zombie cause I was bumping into everything. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, because we're shooting at night sometimes, and I'm and I, I wear glasses, and you're not going to really see a zombie with glasses. So, <laughs> um, so, so you, you know, I was I was like nearly blind at night, <laughs> um, but but I got to give I, I, the shout out and the props to to the makeup artist because I had three or four people sometimes, and it took about a little over two hours, almost three hours, just to put the prosthetics on and 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 all the makeup and. And once you have the final look, then then I, as an actor, am 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 given the freedom to to really play throughout the performance, you know, of working right along with with Danny Trejo and the rest of the great cast, from Richard to Emma to to Samantha, you know, Gilbert, and, and um, uh, there's a little cameo I think in you know with John, the director um uh and 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 if, and 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 Lou Temple which is another another great great character actor just to be able to see their work and go all right this is cool what can i offer with this group so that we can move the story forward and upwards um and and make it an entertaining 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 experience for the crowd to watch you know cuz it's again it's horror but it's not just it's not just any typical horror kind of film 
know it's entertaining as well. That's thankful for the for the great actors, the fun characters, the great story, and just it just seems like y'all are having a lot of fun. So I guess gotta know like how's it how's it like to have Danny Trejo on set? I know everyone says he's serious all this, but he is definitely the light, <laughs> the most like lighthearted person I've ever met. Yeah, you know he he's he's a he's a veteran actor. He's been in so many films, but it's one thing I did learn about you know, about Danny is even we all know he's got a big heart you know and he's a very giving actor um but it's it's the technique on how he works on film because he knows it pretty well you know a lot of times a lot of actors get in their heads about trying to to really truly live the character's life but you forget that you're also working on camera so whether you're shooting on an anamorphic lens or you're shooting on an 85 uh you have to trust the director and and the cinematographers and and the and, and remember what the point of the scene is so so we're still making a movie even though it's a lot of fun you got to go okay how do we shape this in such a way so that the audience can follow the story right along and be and and, and enjoy the experience with us where they could they could feel um and have some kind of compassion for every single character and and um you know, I, I I remember being able to be on set every day and say, hey, what the heck are we doing? But this is fun. So and 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 come up come and 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 being able to come up with all these ideas on set, thinking, oh, how much can we add to this so that it could become even even richer and 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 warmer for the audience to embrace. Yeah, this movie is a lot of fun. It offers a lot to people that love the genre and people that aren't biggest fans of horror. Like I like horror, but sometimes it's hard for me to watch because I also get scared. But a lot of cool, gory shots in this, a lot of fun storytelling, great performances. Uh, lastly, I do want to ask this. I know over the years you have been asked a million questions about Napoleon Dynamite, which celebrates its 20th anniversary this year. Yeah. But I just wanted to know how much does that movie still mean to you two decades later? And are you surprised how timeless it has become? Um, surprised? Yes, I am. You know, it, it, um, you, when you do a movie, you never know its outcome, but the fact that it's, it still resonates to not only to people all over this country, but all over the world. I, I, I myself, am so surprised. Like, like, you know, even, even on Halloween time, you go to the spirit store or any Halloween costume shop and they got costumes of Pedro and of Napoleon and Uncle Rico. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a part of that too. You know, it's, it's, it's a film where we're about these characters who as unique and different as they are to each other, have something in common, which is what the audience is, 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 where, where we are all just trying to figure life out, you know, and, and that's why it's so honored and revered because we're, you know, we're, we're big nerds, you know, we're, we're, we're goofballs. And we, even, even Don, the guy who's played the really cool guy, he's the, you know, a big nerd. So, and, and, and we, there are so many things that we just don't know. So for me, if I'm a part of any film that really explores that, that part of life, then 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 i get the opportunity to experience that and add that to my own life and learn something of it and from it so you know i'm i'm just grateful to be a part of it and and yeah you know when i'm 100 years old i'm like yeah i played pedro and i played miguel <laughs> <laughs> i love that we're all nerds uh the nerds are the best that's for sure and <laughs> Efren, this was an extreme pleasure and i hope we get to do it again I, I love following your journey and looking forward to what you have next for us oh thank you man thank you very much 